Mm. Okay, so on to our next point of resistance to mm-hmm. humility. Mm-hmm. Anger with others. Anger. Okay. My first question about anger mm-hmm. is that if humility is actually about feeling all of our emotions, mm-hmm. how can I how can our anger with others indicate a lack of humility? Yes, yeah, so a lot of people believe that uh, they have the right to experience their anger, and of course they do. Um, we, we, but the reality is we can be angry and not sin, as the Bible says. Mm-hmm. The way we do that is by actually owning the anger as an, as an emotion inside of ourselves that we refuse to direct at another person. Most people, though, with their anger, they use anger as a tool to direct at other people. And as a result, they are nowhere near experiencing any emotion they're actually in the state of abusing the state of anger and actually using their anger to destroy uh, things around them, including other people. Anger um, is is an indication, and unless the anger is a childlike anger, and the way a child experiences anger, if we go over that again, is it just has a little tantrum laying on the ground, kicking and screaming and usually crying, right, Mm. along with it. It doesn't expect anything from when it, when the child is in a pure state of anger. It doesn't expect anything from its environment. It doesn't go up and hit anybody. For example, if the child is going up to hit somebody, then it's now not experiencing its anger. It's now actually acting upon its anger and abusing other people. Mm-hmm. And that's very very different to experiencing anger. When a child is in a pure place of experiencing anger, it just like I said, jumps up and down and feels the anger inside of itself. Now, the majority of people who are in anger are not doing that. Mm. The majority of people who are in anger are actually projecting their anger, forcing their anger upon other people. This is an indication that they have addictions that are not being met. And addictions cover over fears and cover over grief. Now, if we're in a state of anger, this is telling us actually that we are in a state far removed from our actual emotional condition. Mm -hmm. That means that we're far removed from humility. Mm -hmm. Every time we get angry as an adult, we are far removed generally from humility. It's when we experience a childlike sense of anger that that is contained within us and not expressed outwardly to other people in the environment, that is when we're in a pure state of feeling some causal anger. The rest of the time when we're angry, we are just in an effect of wanting our addictions met and them not being met. We are in in the effect of our maintaining our own addictions and then wanting the world to actually give us the addictions, to uh, to give us what, what we want. So would you make a distinction then between anger and anger with others? Is, is it when I'm angry with you that I'm not humble, but when I'm experiencing my anger, I would be humble? Sure. Is but that the, simplifying it too much? Well, I, no, I think it's a nice, simple way of looking at it. But the majority of people, when they hear that, um, won't understand, understand the it. difference. <laughs> <laughs> the majority of times when people on the planet... Uh, experience anger it is usually experienced towards another person sure. or towards a situation that involves other persons and as a result of that is it is an indication that their addictions are not getting met it's got nothing to do with underlying causal emotions now I'm not saying you don't feel it I'm, what i'm saying is don't act upon it mm-hmm. don't act upon your rage and use your rage as a justification for harming another person So, for example, even going up to another person and saying, I was angry with you, you've got to question the reason why a person would do that. Mm -hmm. Like, why do they have to tell you that you're angry with you, they were angry with you? If they were truly experiencing their anger, they wouldn't need to do that. Mm -hmm. The fact that they are doing it is because they want some level of control over you. Mm -hmm. They want to make you feel like they've been angry with you and why would they want that? They want that because they want to make you feel something. Mm. 
about their anger, that you are, they feel that you are to blame for it. So the, the reality is anger directed at other externally is always a result of an addiction not being met. It's always the result of an underlying emotional condition that we're in denial of. Because if we weren't in denial of it, we wouldn't be getting angry with the other person. So it's always out of harmony with humility and therefore out of harmony with truth and therefore in that state we can't expect to receive God's love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what does it show us about our emotional condition? You've touched on that, but is there anything... Well, it's an indication. Our anger is an indication of our own personal justification that other people are to blame for any personal pain that, I, that we experience. Mm -hmm. In other words, what we're really saying is that we are not capable of experiencing our own personal pain without causing personal pain in another. That's really what we're doing when we get angry. What we're doing is we're telling the world around us and ourselves that other people deserve to have pain if we are in pain. Mm. And this is a very, very damaging action. In fact, it causes almost every single negative thing that happens on this planet is caused by this underlying justification that if I am in personal pain, then I have the right to also create personal pain for you. Yeah. Yep. And this is not, uh, this is not, not true. And it also is a, is a, it's grossly unloving. And in, in addition, it is a demonstration of our own lack of humility. In other words, our own lack or our own lack of desire to actually feel our own pain without harming another person. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we have to, have to harm another person when we are in pain? It's because we are in denial of our own pain and we believe we are justified in creating pain for others when we have pain. And we are not justified in doing so. So say I'm an angry person mm -hmm. and I, I hear you saying these things. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm justifying these things. Mm -hmm. What are the steps I would take? Um, what do I need to let go of in order to let go of anger? Well, firstly, we, it's a process, obviously. Firstly, we have to see the addictions we are in. We also then, after, we need to feel these addictions as errors, not as things that we want satisfied, but we have to see them as errors, things that are creating our own unhappiness, actually, in the long run. Secondly, we have to see that every single addiction that we have that creates our anger when it's not met actually covers over the fear that we have inside of ourselves that we're in denial of. Mm. And we need to allow ourselves at some point to get to a state of allowing ourselves to see the fears that we are, are in denial of. Once we go through that phase as a feeling phase, then we'll get to the stage of what has grieved us in the past. And it is usually what has grieved us in the past that causes us to act out of anger in the future or in the present. And so what we need to do is understand that we are just avoiding terrible emotions of grief that we need to allow ourselves to feel without damaging other people. Now, if we're prepared to go through that fa those phases, then we'll very quickly get out of a state of anger and into a state of fear. But as you know from your own experience, it's not always that easy because we have huge addictions involved in our rage. Mm -hmm. We want to be angry. We want to justify it. We have all this arrogance about it as well generally. We want to, we're in denial of the fact that we, it's an emotion inside of ourselves. We always believe somebody else has made us angry or the situation has caused us to be angry. Mm -hmm. not understanding that these are all things that are going on inside of ourselves. And the reality is there are some circumstances where we are attacked and we feel that is unfair. And as a result of our feeling that it's unfair and our denial of our own grief of the unfairness, mm -hmm. we then go on the attack ourselves. And, and so a lot of times it's our, it's our resistance to feeling the grief of unfair actions perpetrated towards ourselves that then cause us to maintain a rage towards others. Mm -hmm. So you see this happening a lot in relationships where a woman might have been treated badly in the past in her relationships. She now, she now has this viewpoint of men that all men are bastards. Like, mm -hmm. There's not a good one on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is an untruth, but besides being an untruth, it's a, maintain, it's a maintenance of her own rage. Mm. She doesn't want to feel the pain of these unfulfilled and unhappy past relationships. Rather, she's now projecting the past onto her present and future. She's now actually determining that all people are the same as the people she's already met. Mm. And this is, a, besides being illogical, another thing that always happens when we're in denial of the true emotions, mm -hmm. um, it's also very unloving because we're projecting upon other people things that may not exist inside of them. We're not giving them the opportunity to, to demonstrate the truth at all. Mm -hmm. uh, people do this with you and I all the time, as you know, where mm -hmm. you know they, they automatically assume because I'm saying I'm Jesus that I'm saying that I'm better than them, for example. It's not a valid assumption. It's not what I feel. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but it's what they assume mm -hmm. and they then automatically get angry about that. So sometimes we receive very nasty emails from people who are not even religious condemning me for saying that I'm Jesus. And they don't even believe in Jesus, many of them, and they're condemning me for saying I'm Jesus because they feel that by saying I'm Jesus, I'm saying that I'm better than them and they feel very angry about that, mm -hmm. which means that they actually feel that they are worse than, than Jesus and 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 they're unwilling to feel the extent of how bad they actually feel about themselves. Um, it's got nothing to do with my feelings about them because my feelings are as I love them and I, that's the whole reason why I give the truth the way we do is because we love them. So, so, you know, it's not our feelings, but, but it's interpreted. And this is the problem with our rage is that we are often interpreting the present based on past experience. And we are way out of harmony when we do this with love. Yeah, that was a very um, uh, important and beautiful thing you said, I think, just a little while ago, that often it's the pain that we haven't felt from the past that causes us to justify the anger in the present and the future. Yeah. And so that seems to be a crucial kind of um, truth to to allow to enter us that wow I'm angry and it must be because there's stuff there in my from past the past that, yeah. I, that I'm not humble to anger does not get created in an individual when there is stuff that has all been felt in the past yeah. so so for example if a, if a child has been harmed in its past and then it was allowed to grieve all of that harm then it would no longer be angry mm -hmm. so the reality is that if I am angry you know, as a, as a person or, 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 or often ang even just occasionally angry or frustrated as a person, it has to do with something that has occurred in my past. Mm -hmm. and, and the present circumstance or situation that we believe has made us angry is just a, a law of attraction event based on our condition to help us expose the emotion from the past yes. that, is, that has caused me to be in this state. And the only reason why I am angry is because I am in denial of that emotion from the past. Mm. And usually that emotion is fear or, and, and grief, like huge amounts of grief generally. And I'm, I'm in fear of the grief and that's what creates my anger. And, and in addition, uh, so I suppose you could say that there are two primary creators of my rage. The first primary creator is my desire to have my addiction met. And when the addiction is not met I, and I expect it to be met, then I get angry. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Secondly, the, the addiction is present because of a denial of fear and grief. Mm -hmm. And if I allow myself to go to this fear and grief, if I was truly humble and didn't have this resistance of anger towards humility, mm -hmm. I would allow myself to go into this feeling of grief, which would allow me then to release the underlying reason why I created the addiction in the first place. Mm -hmm. And once those addictions have gone and the grief is gone, then I will not get angry about the same situation ever again. It's probably difficult for people to to recognise that as a truth, mm. but uh, mm. I certainly see that um, in yourself and and beginning to see that happen for myself, yes. which is exciting. Well, you, you've seen me treat, treated unjustly many times mm -hmm. and... and when I, I just go allow myself to go into my, most of the time allow myself to go into my um, grief about that. Yeah. And as a result of that, I don't feel angry towards the people who've treated me badly mm -hmm. at all. And, and so, you know, you can see that if a person allows themselves to go into a state of grief about the situation and uh, rather than getting into a rage about the situation and, just, and, and justifying their rage, 
um, then, then it makes the person a much more softer individual, much more loving individual. And in every circumstance, even in the most harshest of circumstances, a person in that state can, can always be kind and considerate and loving. What about people who say that anger is a healthy emotion because it causes change, it causes us to stand up for ourselves? How, how do you relate this, this anger that we're talking about to what they're talking about? Are they speaking about anger? Do they have a... I'm asking too many questions. Well, yeah, <laughs> all, all anger is healthy in the, sense, in the sense that if we feel our anger, then we will be healthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, in the, sense, in the sense that we need to feel all of our emotions to be healthy. However, projected at other people, it is not healthy, as you well know and as everybody well knows. It creates a lot of dynamics in the world that are very, very dangerous and damaging, including wars, in fact, are created by this underlying feeling of societal anger from one country to another. So, so you know, the, this kind of rage is not, is not healthy at all. It's caused huge amounts of damage. I, I do not believe that change motivated by rage is ever going to have a permanent benefit. Mm -hmm. Change motivated by love, humility and truth, it will always have a f permanent be benefit. Now it is true that when we come to see the truth on a certain issue, we often instantly angry. And, and this anger is an indication of how much falsehood has been present before then that we need to grieve. Mm -hmm. Now once we grieve the fact that we were told things that were wrong, we will actually find ourselves acting in a very different manner and we will no longer find ourselves getting into a rage about things mm -hmm. as a result of accessing the grief. But often we do not access the grief until we feel the layers above. Now, the layer of anger is the layer of feelings above the addiction. The feelings of the addiction are the layer of feelings above the fear. So, so we, if a person's in total denial, then of course they are going to have to get angry in order to heal. Mm -hmm. It's how they do this anger, how they you know, express this anger in their day-to-day -day life, is to, whether it's going to be damaging to them or not. If they express it to other people and act out their anger towards other people, it is going to further damage their soul and only leave them with more anger to feel. Mm -hmm. That's all it's mm -hmm. going to do. Mm -hmm. It will not actually have a healing effect on them. For it to have a healing effect, they have to feel through the anger they have to feel the anger without harming other persons and just feel how much angry they are, just angry. You know, you can feel anger without projecting it at others. And once you feel this kind of anger, now you can get into the addiction of what the addiction is and also get into the underlying uh, fear and grief when you allow yourself to go into it in that manner. So in that way, it can be a very healing process if you allow yourself to feel it without projecting it upon others. Mm -hmm. If you are projecting it upon others, which the majority of people do, then you are no longer in this state where you're actually healing through your anger. You are now in a state of resistance to healing. You are justifying yourself not being humble and resisting the process of healing. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, is going to be very damaging to you and your future life and or anything, any relationships around you. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I feel there's a big difference between those two states. For the majority of people on the planet, they need to assume that the majority of their anger is addictive in nature rather than childlike experience. When you see a, ch a person experiencing anger as a childlike experience, you feel completely safe. Yes. When you feel the anger of people around you who are not in a childlike experience, you feel completely unsafe. It's mm -hmm. very easy to tell whether a person is safe or unsafe experiencing their anger. If they are safe, if you feel safe when they're experiencing their anger, then it means they are not projecting it outwards. If you feel unsafe or criticised or harmed by them experiencing their anger, then now that's an indication that they are now blaming others and they are affecting others and they are damaging the souls of others and themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is the majority of the planet falls into the second category. Yeah, yeah. sure.